And we have Arna Leitz with us, a social democrat politician and a member of the European Parliament. Mr. Leitz, thank you for joining us with, uh, with us in studio this morning. Uh, let's talk about these coalition talks, these exploratory talks. Your party, uh, the social democrats, the SPD, are now talking with the political opponents, the uh, Chancellor Merkel's conservatives, about forming another coalition government together. There were some positive tones that came out of um, these exploratory talks yesterday. What is your take? My take is that now, as the uh, situation arose uh, through the other previous talks uh, Mrs. Merkel had with other parties and it didn't work out to, to build a grand coalition, that we now have to talk. And uh, I'm very positive myself that the party made clear that there are three options on the table. We have a, a grand coalition, we have a minority government, and we have new elections. And so these three options need to be now uh, decided on the topics which are being now discussed, as you mentioned, for this week. And uh, so let's see how big the moves are of the other parties. But we have a very tight situation as, for example, the Bavarian more conservative party is going mm -hmm. to face up an election coming up. So they're actually very strong and uh, people like Mr. Orban inviting him to their party gathering shows a little bit the direction they might would like to go. So uh, there are many things on the table and that yeah. now needs to be discussed. So there are tensions there. I want to ask you about one of the options on the table, which is that grand coalition government. Your party made very clear after the elections that it would not enter a coalition government. It was perceived by many social democrats that one of the reasons your party did not perform well in the elections was because of the last four years in this government with Chancellor Merkel's conservatives. Why would you go into the same agreement if that's what the party decides to do? I was very uh, thankful for Martin Schulz that he made clear in the party leadership decision already on the evening of the election that we're not entering a grand coalition because it's not only us, it's also the conservatives. Both sides lost 14% uh, and also the AFD, the right wing now uh, party moved into the parliament. So there are new times. As uh, Lars Klingbeil said, our new general uh, secretary on mm -hmm. Our, our party leadership. And uh, so that, meant, that meant that uh, we have been not voted into a grand coalition again. Uh, it harmed us as a party. Uh, I got uh, uh, support by, for example, Austrian social democrats who lost dramatically over grand coalition through grand coalition. And so that is the situation uh, we should not look into. And therefore, uh, the price of the bargaining is going to be definitely very high because it's not only the party leadership who decides on that. We are going to have a party congress uh, in two weeks' time, but also then all members, uh, whatever comes out in a coalition, uh, possible coalition paper, uh, then have to uh, agree on. Uh, so we have a party vote in the end of the whole process. So it's going to be, you know, the conservatives really have to move a big, big step forward if they would like to have that. And Merkel made clear she doesn't want to have a minority government, and uh, I'm not totally against it. So what will be different this time around? If you look at it from the voters' perspective, you said yourself that they did not vote for this coalition government to come back together again. What are you going to tell SPD supporters about that what will be different this time? Well, first of all, because we were so clear, uh, there was not an attempt by Mrs. Merkel uh, to start a grand coalition uh, all of a sudden uh, after the election. If you remember, uh, it was still open if there's going to be uh, so to say, a uh, coalition tryout by liberals, greens and the conservatives, uh, which would not have taken place uh, if the SPD wouldn't have made clear that we are not standing aside for a grand coalition. Now, as this failed, we, we yes, stand in uh, responsibility uh, inside the country, uh, but also based on our lines and based on uh, our perceptions of a grand coalition uh, or another form, mm -hmm. we never tried out a minority government. So in that regard, um, that would be, for example, one option where things need to be discussed. Yes, it might be more difficult, but then politics has to be discussed as Merkel doesn't like to have that. One of the issues that's being discussed at the moment is Europe. There seems to be some consensus between the negotiating parties on that issue. And you're on the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, Germany has now abstained in key votes. Is Europe getting impatient? <sighs> I don't see that, uh, but we all are going to hang in there. Um, we are used to that in other countries. I mean, if you look in, in Spain, if you look in Sweden, minority governments or even just shaping governments having re-elections. Uh, so it's unfortunately a new situation, but nevertheless, we are still working in the, in the framework of our constitution. And in that regard, uh, there's no really push or, or difficult 
uh, kind of uh, pushed by the European Union. Nevertheless, we need reforms. We are aiming ourselves to work close with Macron's reforms uh, ideas. We need, for example, a fiscal minister. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we need to have a European budget. There are many reforms, in particular of foreign politics. I just returned from Israel. There needs to be a broader stand uh, for international law as the US kind of drops out. And therefore, uh, it's helpful if Germany could run a new uh, campaign, for example, uh, for the peace talks uh, in Israel with France together. Your party leader, Martin Schulz, said that he wanted a deeper Eurozone reform in a United States of Europe by 2025. Is that the right move at a time when nationalism seems to be on the rise, when populist groups seem to be gaining ground? Well, we have to express, uh, express and actually formulate a European vision uh, that people get an understanding what it's all about. Um, Business-wise, Europe runs actually quite well. In particular, Germany, uh, therefore the AFD result, uh, comes through different uh, situations as well. Um, and uh, building up uh, more capacity on general questions, people want to have more security. I'm happy that we are working towards European uh, security reform. Mm -hmm. um, we have to build up on the next 20, 30 years a European army. That's what my party wants uh, to have. And therefore, um, we might not enter that phase uh, 2025, but we have to work towards this situation in order to keep the peace, which is, uh, in comparison to other regions, a really great thing to have. Arne Leeds, a social democrat, a politician, also a member of the European Parliament. Thank you very much for joining us in our studio this morning. Thank you as well.